<laughs> okay, so um, I think we'll make a start. So welcome everybody <laughs> to our honey making session. Thank you very much for joining me. So today we're going to learn how to make Rosh Hashanah honey cake. And the reason that we're making it today is because actually to achieve the best out of your cake, this particular recipe in any case, um, you need to give it time for the flavour to mature, um, which it does very nicely. So um, when our cakes are done, the best way to uh, work with them is to let them cool completely, and that bit is important, and then either put them in an airtight tin or wrap them in securely in foil and or cling film. Um, until you're ready to use them. But they do keep very well, and that time to, to let them mature is very important. Um, so Ben was slightly economical with the truth when he said that this was a family recipe, because actually it isn't. Um, <laughs> it's in fact, um, Claudia Roden's recipe from the Book of Jewish Food. Um, but... Oh, you must be related. <laughs> Uh, but um, it's actually, I, I, I have changed it somewhat, so it's not quite Claudia Roden's recipe. And um, the, the, the ways I've changed it are, as you will have seen from, from the ingredients that were provided, Claudia Roden actually puts walnuts or almonds in her cake or and or sultanas. And I happen to have a family that think that both of those things in honey cake are not good and therefore neither of those things appear in my honey cake um okay so uh, the first if this cake is just so easy it's unbelievable so first of all i've got my loaf tins and um i've lined them with baking parchment because that tends to work better than just greasing them although if you haven't got any baking baking parchment don't panic greasing them is just as, as good um and just a note there if you are greasing your own baking tins I know this probably doesn't apply to any of us, but just in case, this cake is made with no dairy. Um, it's because it's made with vegetable oil. And so if you wanted to make sure that you can still eat your cake in a kosher meal that's contained milk, you must oil your tins with oil similarly and not with butter. So um, I've got my tins here. And um, the basics for making the cake are, first of all, you have to really thoroughly mix all your wet ingredients um, and then you basically add in your dry ingredients and what you'll what we'll end up with as you'll see is we won't end up with a cake mixture that looks like your sort of traditional Victoria sponge uh, or anything like that we will end up with something that looks much more like a batter because it's going to be very smooth and very liquid so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our eggs two eggs I'm just going to switch my phone on now so you can have a camera's eye view of the mixing bowl as well right Alice, so. Alice does it matter what size egg because I've no. only got medium no okay so I've got my kitchen aid uh, so I've moved um, the kitchen aid into the uh, back uh, room of our house because as I was explaining to Rachel earlier our kitchen is absolutely minute and also doesn't have any Wi-Fi signals, so that wouldn't have been very good for today. So I'm going to break my eggs. One, two. And um, next, I'm going to beat them really thoroughly with my um, sugar. And here is 200 grams, 200 grams of caster sugar. So I'm going to pop that in the mixing bowl of the KitchenAid. Okay, so I've put that in there. And now I'm going to switch on to, to about a medium, semi-medium to quite. I'm just going to leave that um, for a second. Just moving away so that you didn't get deafened by the noise of the mixer. Because what we're doing here, which is important, is we're putting a lot of air into those eggs and that sugar to make a really lovely creamy um, batter. So uh, it's important to mix it up really thoroughly. I'm just going to go and check on it now so Rachel, if you can switch me over to the other camera, that would be great. 
So it's beginning to look nice and creamy, but it still needs a little bit longer because we want to, to, to have it uh, beaten up really, really thoroughly. Okay, I'm going to I'm switch the mixer off now. I'm just going to check on my mixture. Now, to me, it does not look quite beaten enough because um, it, it should start to look thick and almost satiny when it's when it's got the right um, when it's been beaten long enough. So I'm just going to give it a little bit longer. And you can probably hear I've turned it up. Sorry, Rachel, if you go back to the thank you. I, you probably called the drink there of my cookery book, which has got about 20 years worth of honey cake uh, on the pages. Um, and it's also got the fact that in 2010 I made I think 149 portions of synagogue which was four loaf cakes and two rounds. So that's very useful to know if you ever need to make 149 portions of that honey cake. We will need again. So I'm just going to check my mixture again. Alice, have you put in the honey and everything yet? <coughs> no. Sorry? No. Have you put in the honey and everything yet? No, I've literally put the sugar and the eggs and that's it. I couldn't hear above my uh, my right. racket. No, no, it was my racket. Okay, so now the mixture um, looks much sort of creamier and shinier, and that's what I'm looking for to show that the um, sugar and the eggs have been really well beaten. And also, can you see when it's dripping off the, um, the mixing thing, it's doing it more slowly, and that's because it's thickened slightly. So now I'm going to add the the wet ingredients because you put all of them in before you get anywhere near the dry ingredients. So the first wet ingredient, ingredient I'm going to use is my vegetable oil. So here's my vegetable oil and it's very important that you don't use anything heavy like oil or walnut oil or rapeseed oil because that will interfere with the um, flavour of the cake. So um, I'm going to measure out my 125 millilitres, which is four ounces, so 125 millilitres of vegetable oil. And I'm pouring those straight into the bowl where the uh, sugar and the eggs are. So I've poured that in. The next thing is I'm going to add the coffee. So um, it's a cup of coffee. That I made earlier, still um, slightly lukewarm, and you are meant to add it in when it's warm. And I'm going to add in 125 uh, millilitres, four fluid ounces of coffee to that same mixture. I think I drunk the coffee. You've drunk the coffee. <laughs> we'll have to see if there's a Alice, Alice, do you have to do it slowly, pour it in, or does it can be shoved all in? You, no, just pour it all in. Right. That's the booze. That is the booze. Now, we we had a long discussion about this last week, didn't we, in the yeah. middle of nervous, actually, about what um, alcohol to put in. And um, I've gone for a very conservative choice of brandy this year. Claudia Roden says brandy or rum. I've never made it with rum. I have made it, which I think I was showing last time, with cherry flavoured vodka, which was absolutely delicious. So, you know, I think a choice between either brandy or cherry vodka or just plain vodka, um, although I think the cherries went really well with the honey, you know, is fine. Sure. If you like rum, then go for that as well. So, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add two tablespoons of brandy. So two tablespoons of brandy. So 
got my uh, measures. Measures, yes, thank you, my spoons. <laughs> I'm just going to put them in. Okay, so I've added the brandy. So the next thing we need to think about, we've added the uh, oil, we've added the coffee, we've added the brandy. Now we come to add the honey. Now this is very important to know because um, some people make honey cake with golden syrup and personally, I just don't think that's right. But I appreciate everyone has their own difference. Claudia Roden definitely does not use golden syrup. She uses uh, liquid honey. And it is important that it's liquid because I never forget one year I bought some very posh honey with comb in so that we could do the apples and honey. And I thought that could double up for the cake and getting it out of the jar and you know making sure you have the right kind of um, amount was an absolute nightmare. So I've got to be honest, measuring the honey for me is always um, a bit slapdash. Um, so uh, the standard honey jar is 454 grams. You need 250 grams of honey. Um, I've got roughly just, just over half a jar left. So because I made um, some cake yesterday as well. So I'm going to use all of that and maybe a smidgen extra. And um, honey does have a nasty habit of kind of the last bits get stuck in the jar. So I'd encourage you to use, if you are using a jar, not a bottle, to use a spatula to get the last bits out. So now I'm going to add my honey. I've just tried the, um, the cherry vodka. Oh, yes. I had some. And... Um, Thought I'd have a go. Good. So this is this is where I need another camera person, and helpfully all my family have left because what I'm trying to do is uh, I'm trying to make sure I get the last bits out of the honey jar with the spatula, and I've not done too badly. But there's a little bit left in the bottom that I'm just going to go in for now. I'm not quite, I'm not that convinced that I've got quite enough honey there, so I'm just going to add a tiny smidgen more. I had a big honey crisis earlier because John forgot to buy me a new jar, so this is porridge honey, which I'm now completely unable to open. Right. Um, on for the radical option of taking the top off so this could be a risky move because now I'm just going to have to scoop it in but I'm going to go for it anyway just a little bit more okay so hopefully everybody has now got all their wet ingredients in the bowl which looks exactly the same as before because we haven't mixed it up so just to recap we've done the coffee we've done the oil we've done the brandy slash rum slash vodka and we've done the honey, and now we're going to mix it up again. Don't put your, don't put your mixer on too much uh, because you'll get splattered with honey cake uh, mixture if you're not careful, thank you, Rachel, um, which just almost happened to me. So you don't need to mix it for that long, just enough to make sure that the ingredients are nicely um, together. So I'm going to stop it now and just let you have a look at the colour. So you'll see the, the coffee um, has turned it a pale sort of golden brown and it's still unsurprisingly very liquid because obviously we've just added more liquid to it and we haven't yet added any dry ingredients. So that means it must be time for the dry ingredients. So I'm going to move on to those now. We're go we've got our dry ingredients. So here we have uh, 300 grams of plain flour. We have a pinch of salt. And I'm going to add that into the flour. We have a teaspoon 
of cinnamon. And again, I'm going to put that straight into the flour because I, I think it's much better. Normally, I just put I put all the dry ingredients together. I weigh out the flour, and then in the in the weighing scales bowl, I just pop the other dry ingredients on top of there so that they're all mixed in before I'm putting them in with the wet ingredients. So I'm going to add in the cinnamon. So that's all gone in there. And next I'm going to add in, sorry, the cinnamon was one teaspoon of cinnamon. So we've had a pinch of salt, teaspoon of cinnamon, and now a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cloves. Now, ground cloves have an incredibly strong flavour, which I think is one of the things that makes this cake so kind of rich and um, complex when it's matured. But do be careful not to add in too much by mistake, because I think one year I put in far too much cloves and, and it can be very overpowering. So just be careful with your measurements. And pop that in like that. I'm just giving it a little mix. And then lastly, but by no means leastly, we've got um, half a teaspoon of bicarb of soda and two teaspoons of baking powder. So half a teaspoon of bicarb and two teaspoons of baking powder. And I'm gonna add those in now as well. I'm just going to mix those a little tiny bit in the bowl and then I'm going to add them all at once so no folding gradually anything like that um, I just add in the whole lot at once so oh. So now you can see I'm just putting the whole lot in and then I'm going to switch on the mixer and gently at first because otherwise you risk having a lot of splash back and then I'm going to turn it up just a tiny bit So what I wanted to show you is when you mix the um, ingredients like this, you will end up with a ring of flour around the edge of your bowl. And that's perfectly normal, but this is where you need to take your spatula and just gently go around each bit of the bowl, scraping that leftover bit of flour into the mixture. making sure you get it all in and then wiping the excess on the blade there so you don't lose any of the mixture and then you need to mix that flour and turn up your um, mixer a little bit more now because it's all nicely mixed in and so it, it won't spatter and actually you, you don't need to mix it for very long So that should be enough and I will show you what it looks like. So it's now uh, very smooth, it's a dark brown because obviously you've got the cloves and the cinnamon adding to the colour um, and that is done and ready to go into the tins. Now this is the moment where if you want to add those optional extras of the walnuts or the almonds or the sultanas then this is the time when you would do it and you would literally just um, pop them in and give it a very quick uh, mix up. Um, I mean you, the, the instructions do say that, um, that you can dust your sultanas um, with flour um, and your walnuts and almonds a bit like when you're making a Christmas cake 
<laughs> I shouldn't mention that, should I? Uh, when you're uh, cake and you um, coat your, your fruit to stop it all sinking to the bottom. But personally, I've never found that made any difference to me, so I wouldn't bother. Um, if you, um, so if you are adding your uh, nuts slash fruit, then please do go for it now. Just checking on everybody. How are you doing, Elliot? Are you, kind of, are you caught up with us or not? I think so. It, I think it looks all right. It's got lots of bub air bubbles to formulate. Yes, so. that's good because the air bubbles come from the bicarb and the um, baking powder and also the fact that we've already spent quite a lot of time beating air into it already. So that's good. So and did you say that you don't, you choose not to add walnut pieces? Yes, I choose uh, partly because for, uh, for many, many years I was making this cake in huge quantities for synagogue and obviously we couldn't have any nuts in it because and people don't have it. Yeah, and also um, children don't like it with nuts anyway so you know I, I never I never really made it with nuts. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pour the cake mixture into the tins. I'm going to put them on a tray so I'm just going to go and get an oven tray. So I went to pick up a big tray because after years of bitter experience, I've learned it's much safer to bake your honey cakes on a tray so that if you have any overflow issues at all, then your honey cake does not drip onto the bottom of the oven and cause your husband to be extremely angry with you and have to spend hours cleaning the oven. So that's a top, a top baker's tip there. So how far up would you fill it? Half or? Three quarter? Well, basically, you want to fill it, yeah, it should be about halfway. Right. And you should have enough mixture from your one bowl to fill up the two nine by five inch loaf tins to the midpoint. Yeah, okay. But I'll show you as I go along. Okay. <laughs> so I've got my bowl of mixture here, and I'm literally going to pour batter into my lining. I mean, you can see I'm not doing it sort of accurately or anything. I'm just doing it by eye and then into the other one. And then I'm going to kind of judge to make sure they have roughly the same amount of mixture. And I'm going to have to put the foam down because I need to use the spatula to scrape out the last bits of the batter. You can see what I mean. It's a very liquid cake batter because it's made with oil and not the traditional sort of Victoria sponge creaming method. So I'm going to take my spatula. I'm just making sure I get the last bits of mixture out of the bowl. And into the tin. I need to do a really good whiz around with the spatula just to make sure I get absolutely all of it out. Okay, so I'll just show you what the tins look like. So they probably are about half full, maybe a little bit. No, I think that probably is about half full, looking at the depth of the tin. I think I've probably got slightly more on the left-hand one than the right-hand one, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to um, angst about that particularly. Mm, maybe, actually, maybe I will. I'm <laughs> not angst about it, but maybe... I I will pour a little bit from the left into the right. So just a just a smidgen. I mean, really, it's all done by eye. I mean, I realised that this was the first time I'd made single quantities of these cakes for absolutely years, because normally I make double quantities and then I use a bigger loaf tin. Um, but this is, you know, you can use a round tin, you can use a, a loaf tin, you can experiment with the quantities over the years anyway um, to see how much fits your particular tin. Because it's, it's, it's a very flexible recipe anyway. So now I'm going to put them in the oven. So I've had my oven preheating for half an hour. It takes a long time to cook, and so what you don't want to happen is to 
because you don't want to happen, you don't want the top to burn and the middle to be raw. So I'm going to set a timer for an hour. Now, Claudia Roden says that your cake might take an hour and a quarter, but I think she's exaggerating because um, it's only my really, really big round ones that ever took that long. So um, I would um, test definitely, depending on whether your oven tends to run warm or, or cold, I would test after about 55 minutes. I'm going to come off the, the phone now because I think, yeah. Okay, because you just need one of me now. So this was this was the moment when I was meant to go, and here's one I prepared earlier and pull out from under the table a beautiful honey cake. Now I did make two honey cakes yesterday, and um, actually they weren't they weren't tremendously good, which is not the thing to say, is it? But I, d I don't know if it's because I was using gluten free flour because I wanted to ha have a cake that I could eat. And so um, I did have a bit of a problem with the top being quite burnt by the end. But if I show you, this is the sort of crumb consistency. And hopefully the video will show the colour as well. That's the sort of colour you want on the outside. A kind of nice golden brown, not burnt. And then a nice um, firm crumb texture on the inside. But obviously I've cut this one up like way too early because... Um, really it needs to be resting for the next few days to mature the flavour but and it should feel sort of slightly sticky um, and Josephine was reminding me yesterday she really likes eating honey cake with ice cream at Rosh Hashanah so you know ice cream uh, on its own with a cup of tea whatever whatever you like so basically our cakes are now in the oven so um, that's that's it easy Sorry, so you do, you once you've cooked it, yes, take out the tin, and then you just leave it for a few days to. When, you, when you've cooked it, you, I don't know how many people are regular cake makers, but you would you test it like you would a normal cake. In other words, by putting a skewer or a very sharp knife into the centre. If it comes out clean with no crumb left in the blade, then it's cooked. If it's a bit sticky, you'll need to um, uh, put it in for five minutes. You know, heat kind of looking and testing and then looking back in and then uh, when it's done you take it out of the oven and leave it to cool down completely and once it's completely cool then either put it in an airtight tin or wrap it firmly in tin foil and or cling film um, until you want to eat it. Well the kids will want to eat it straight away but... <laughs> uh, okay well... You, They'll have to you, wait. You won't get the benefit of the full flavour maturation if you do that. Um, but of course, I mean, you've just seen how easy they are to knock up. So you could always knock up another one in time for Rosh Hashanah next week anyway. Okay. And it's from 55 minutes to an hour and 15, depending on your oven. Yes, exactly. Okay. Just keep looking, you know, keep, keep an eye on it and, um, and keep sort of having a check. Cool. I'm going to pop them in now. Hey! Hey! Yours in, Guy. Mine's in, yeah. I mean, I is yours in, Ruth? Mine's in, yay! I, I tasted, I tasted the um mixture and I yeah. thought, whoa, I like it. I've got, got Bradley in it. <laughs> you the see, raw, the raw mixture's really tasty. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna good. save some of yours for Rachel as well, Di. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. It's been really lovely. Thank you, Alice, for taking time. Thank you, Alice. Yes. Thank no, you. no problem. Thank Rachel you. for hosting. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much, Rachel. Thank Rachel. Enjoy your mum's cake, Rachel. Yeah, I will do. <laughs> <laughs> just going to turn up tomorrow and just be like, I'm just taking yeah. this bit. Anna <laughs> to all of you. Yes, Anna Tava. Bless you. Take care. care. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.